the last thing is called dropout. Uh, it's pretty popular like four years ago. But nowadays, we know that how it works and how, when we can apply dropout. The idea is like a good model should be robust to changes on the inputs. So for example, you can recognize an image, object on an image. You change the angle, you change the light, you change anything, you should still uh, recommend this image. Uh, for example, for this figure, you still recognize what it is, no matter how many noises are added into that. So a long time ago, people already know that you can add a noise to the training data. This is equivalent to adding a regularization to the loss function. But the idea of dropout is like, because you have neural networks, you have multiple layers, dropout adding noises to the internal layers, not just to the input. In particularly, if x is the output of a particular layer, then dropout to get x prime, which is such that the expectation of x prime is equal to x. So we add the noise to x prime, but we don't change the, uh, the expectation at the least. You have multiple ways to do that. In particular, dropout doing is that you choose a probability p, or we kind of call it the dropout probability, then with probability p, we set xi into zero. Otherwise, we keep xi value, but divided by one minus p, so that the expectation still the same. We didn't change the expectation. Okay. Now, how we apply dropout? Dropout usually applies to the output of hidden fully connected layer. So we only talk about fully connected layer yet. So uh, we. We were gonna talk about different layers bef uh, after that, but dropout usually is only applied to fully connected layers. The reason is because fully connected layer is the layer have the most model capacities between all the layers we're gonna talk about in the uh, in later. So that for these particular layers, we're gonna apply dropout as a regularization to, to the layer. In particular, what it works is like if edge it's the output of a hidden layer, which means we times W uh, weight plus a bias and apply the activation. Then we apply dropout to edge to get edge uh, prime, and the edge prime is fit into the next level, uh, layer. So if you talk about the example here, the internal layer we have five outputs, H1 to H5. If you apply dropout, we may likely to just drop, just set H2 and H5 to be zero. So which means we remove H1 and H5 values to the next layer. And we scale the rest of three. So with the on expectation, we didn't change anything. So then dropout is probably, uh, it's, it's not, it, every time, so every time we train, uh, we run a forward pass, we actually apply dropout, which means every time the one you drop out is different. So you don't, you don't do the dropout at first and fix all the things. Then you permanently lose H2 and H5. So every time we drop different nodes. Any questions so far? Okay. So dropout is a regularization. During inference, we should sure don't apply regularization because regularization makes the training because it's only useful for, to limit the choice of the weight uh, during training. During inference, dropout is just to return the input value. So that is during inference and during training that we pr had different behaviors. So you, you, can, you, you can still apply dropout, but the inference we prefer have deterministic results. So we don't, we don't do anything in inference. Okay, questions so far? Good. <laughs>